For decades, people living in Africa towns say they've had to suffer in silence. Researchers. Africa town. Sounds lovely. Would you, would you buy would you buy a five hundred five hundred thousand dollar house in Africa town? Hell yeah. Listen, I wouldn't buy a house for a dollar in Africa town. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't even want to live in the suburbs of Africa the state, whatever state Africa town is in, I wouldn't want to live in that state. What, whatever planet? You Africa town. You kidding me? Yeah. For decades, people living in Africa towns say they've had to suffer in silence. Researchers found toxins like lead in the soil and trees, putting people who live on that land at risk. We first investigated this story in 2021. NBC 15's Karis Harmon joins us now with this all new story at six. Karis, researchers say the problem still exists as the community is on the verge of opening a pair of cultural tourism attractions. Yeah, that's right, Kim. And after community members say yeah. their cries for help were ignored, now they're taking matters into their own hands. Africa Town is a community that's surrounded by industry. Joe Womack is the president and executive director of Africa Town Clean, healthy, educated, safe, and sustainable community incorporated. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Where is this at? It's Be Home, Alabama. I don't mm, know. This Ohio or something? I, no I think idea. it's in Alabama, Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah, this, I think this is Mobile. Africa Town. Yeah, it's by Mobile or some shit like that. They think that if they just say it, it's going to come true. That's one thing about some people. We do think that if we just say it, it'll come true. Joe Womack is the president and executive director of Africa Town Clean, Healthy, Educated, Safe, and Sustainable Community Incorporated, an environmental <laughs> nonprofit. That's he a mouthful. People in that community have suffered in silence for years. The result of living in an area with heavy industry. There have been people that have gotten sick. We got a rash of camp, uh, cancer, and and I personally can attest that a lot of people that have, were born at the same time, uh, around the same time that I was born in the forties and the fifties, they they they're going on the lower right now, and that's much too soon. In 2021, researchers released their data, conducting studies to analyze the soil and trees, among other things. Long time and our findings have been staggering. In 2017, more than 1,000 Africatown residents filed a class action lawsuit, alleging that during the paper making process of paper companies in the area caused harmful chemicals to be created and released into that community. And accumulates in the fat cells of the human body over a period of time. So the longer a person's exposed to these things and doesn't find any relief from that activity, given the fact there's no remediation of those efforts, it contributes to failing health cancer clusters and death. Joe Womack says the community has reached out to several agencies, but their cries for help were ignored. We've been trying to get some of the EPA and ADM to uh, come and do some testing out here. So we're going to do some of our own sort of testing. Rachel Iweka is a research assistant at USA. She went to Oakland, California, studying soil contamination and recognizing an ongoing problem. Well, my experience in California made me really open my eyes to so many environmental injustice problems that could be in our own community. Uh, during my time in Oakland, there was someone who had up to 600 ppm of lead in their backyard. And in California, the state, oh, the, the permissible limit of lead in California is only 80 ppm. She says soil contamination with heavy metals like lead through industrial sources is a problem everywhere and a light needs to be shown on it. Soil lead poisoning can cause a variety of detrimental health effects such as seizures, uh, even bleeding up to death. Putting the spotlight on the issue and trying to do something through free soil lead level testing in the community using an instrument called a portable XRF. So it uses x-rays. So this glider is coming up here to fucking help them test this. A glider in a fucking African. Okay, so uh, it is 1.08% per uh, Prairie Patel and the rest is sun. Damn. Yo, that's a dangerous place. You talking about man. Africa Town? Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, Mo Mobile is fucking lit. <laughs> Yo, my God, man. I would, that's a, 
dangerous place, man. And this glider, man, he better test that soil and get the fuck out of there, man. Um, salute to Aster J. He says, one group they have to do all this shit for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. And this is just a small group of sons, man. And you got to fucking, and they're, so they're going to sue about, about environmental injustice or, or, or environmental racism. Isn't that a new thing? Environmental racism? Yeah, they're going to sue the state and fucking yeah, the That's a big thing. thing. Yeah, hey, uh, here's something that's surprising. Amenities are a C plus. Wow, because all that industry is around there. Them places don't want to come there. Is all this because they probably have. They look like they got power plants, paper mills, all types of shit. There. Yeah, Mobile's popping right now. They're building Amazon and Walmart fulfillment stuff, and a lot of businesses are coming to Alabama. Google is that interact with the materials uh, and then the materials produce x-rays of specific wavelengths to measure the amount of uh, particular elements in the substance. Iweka showed us how it worked, pointing the device on a small patch of exposed soil at the Robert Hope Community Center. So there's only 16 ppm of lead at this site. Giving community members the opportunity to really know just what's going on in the ground that they live on. Awareness is really key to, to limiting exposure, knowing that where there are higher concentrations that there might be sources that are important to examine. So being able to locate hot spots and being able to respond to that in an appropriate way in other words don't let your kids eat the soil they'll be calling this guy racist in a year i promise you uh, and yep. help residents that might struggle with uh the sort of steps forward the free soil testing is tomorrow april 15th from 10 a.m to 5 p.m at the robert hope community yes, center man. the researchers say you should get your results back within minutes We'll tell you how you can properly package your soil. Your Just look for the link to this story on our website, myabc15.com. Kim?